just in time back flushing in activity based costing chapter. Uh, let's talk about an example so you can kind of compare and contrast the traditional way we've been handling costs versus the just in time or back flushing way. Uh, I'm going to be doing it from uh, exercise in the book. It's exercise 12. If you don't have your book, I'll read it to you. It says that we have a, a product and uh, we make shovels. And on May 28th, we ordered, received, and used handles and sheet metal costing $11,340. Now, under a traditional approach, when we order and receive materials, they go into material inventory. So they would show up as $11,340 as a debit because we buy it. Then it would show up $11,340 as a credit to material inventory when we use it. And it would show up in our work and process account $11,340 for our direct materials. Because remember, this is sheet metal and handles. The, then on the 29th, direct labor costs of $5,400 were incurred. Well, direct labor, we know, shows up in work and process. Uh, because that's the labor that worked on the products. And then it says on the 29th also, overhead costs incurred were 8100 And we know overhead also flows first into the work and process account. So here's our current manufacturing costs of making shovels. Then on the 30th, it says we completed the trowels or the shovels for 24800 so that means the cost of the goods manufactured was $24,800. And that will come out of work in process and into finished goods. That's the cost of the goods manufactured. And then finally on the 31st, it says we sold trowels costing $24,000. Which means the cost of goods sold of $24,000 comes out of finished goods and goes into cost of goods sold. So this is the traditional approach. If we were to find the balances in work in process and finished goods at the end of the period, I would add up my debits, subtract my credits, and I would find that work in process has an ending balance in it of $40. In other words, there's still $40 of work in process still shovels yet to be completed. In finished goods, I compare what I made versus what I sold, and I can see that I have an $800 ending balance in finished goods. In other words, those are shovels yet to be um, shipped to the customers. So that would be the traditional approach. Now, let's do this problem one more time with feeling, but use back flushing. In back flushing, remember, all my costs go first into cost of goods sold. Then I flush them back into either finished goods or into work in process, depending upon what's on the loading dock and what's in the factory. So going back on May 28th, when we ordered and received our materials of 11340 your direct materials would go directly into cost of goods sold because you wouldn't have bought it unless you had a customer for those shovels. On the 29th, direct labor costs incurred, 5400 The guys only work on stuff you've sold, so cost of goods sold. And overhead costs of 8100 whether that's actual or applied, go directly into cost of goods sold. Then it says on the 30th, we completed trowels costing $24,800. Well, we do nothing with that. We don't care because are we working on these? And if we've completed them, are they ready to be sold? So nothing. And then on the 31st, it says sold trowels costing $24,000. Now what the sold trowels costing $24,000 gives you is your ending balance. So we know that cost of goods sold is $24,000 because that's what we sold. But if I total up these, they don't come to $24,000, do they? So that means I have to flush back the difference of $840. So what do we know about that? Well, 
It's either in finished goods or it's in work in process. Now, finished goods is always the difference between the cost of the goods manufactured and the cost of the goods sold. So if we manufactured 24,800 and we sold 24,000, the difference is your ending balance or $800. So of this 840, 800 gets flushed back to finished goods and the rest, the 40, must be what's in the production process.